Hey everyone, welcome back to the Code Wolf. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at the Azure Migrate Application and Code Assessment Tool. It's a long name, but this will be a pretty quick demo. This tool essentially allows you to scan your application to identify potential problems or issues you might run into when you go to migrate your app to the cloud. This tool is available both in the command line and in Visual Studio, so let's take a look at how this works. A quick reminder to please hit the subscribe and like buttons if you enjoy this content. All right, so to get started with the AppCat tool, we need to install it either in Visual Studio or through the .NET CLI. Now I'm gonna show you how to install and use AppCat in both, but this video will be a little bit more oriented towards the CLI approach, just so that it's applicable to a wider audience, but the Visual Studio support is great too. So if you are using Visual Studio, just head out to the Visual Studio Marketplace and then you just download and install that here. You can see this AppCat tag over here and there's some basic information about it. If you want to use the CLI version, you can install that using the .NET tool install command with a dash G flag for global, and then that's called .NET dash AppCat. So if you just run this command, it should install just fine for you. So I already have the tool installed, and for this video, for our sample project, I'm actually going to use a small app that I built in a previous tutorial, but you do not have to have completed that tutorial to understand this. They're completely separate, so no worries, you'll be good to go. So this is just a flashcard app with a UI that talks to an API, and that API also talks to Azure already, but right now this is a mostly local experience, so the app is just sitting here on my local computer. Now, if we wanted to analyze how ready this is to go to Azure, we can just use that AppCat tool and analyze this. So to run that analysis, all we have to do is say AppCat Analyze, and that's gonna start up this workflow for us, and it's gonna ask us which projects we want to analyze. So it found both our API and our UI. And I'll try to make this a little bit bigger here for you. And so I'm gonna select both of these because we want to analyze our entire solution. So I'll hit enter. And then it's gonna ask if we wanna analyze the source code or the binary dependencies. So you could do either one or both. In this case, I'm not going to analyze the dependencies. This would be things like NuGet packages. I'm just gonna keep this simple and focus on our code and sort of this top level concerns here. So I'm just gonna say source code and settings, which would include things like our app settings file and other configurations. So I'll hit enter. And then we also get the option to see this report as either a CSV, HTML, or JSON. Personally, I think the HTML version is by far the most approachable and readable, but I could see the other two formats being useful for other purposes besides just browsing. But for now, I'm gonna pick HTML. And then for the name of this, let's call this Flashcard Azure to see how ready we are to take our Flashcard app to Azure. And then hit enter. And now it's gonna ask us if we wanna continue, so I'll say yes and just give that a moment to run. Now, while that's going, if you're using the Visual Studio Flow, it's very similar, but you're just gonna to wanna to right click on one of your projects, and then you can choose Replatform to Azure. So if I select that, then we can go to New Report, and you basically just get a UI version of what we just ran through in the CLI. So if I were to hit Next, you get the same options here, and then you hit Analyze. So just go ahead with that flow if you're more comfortable with Visual Studio but I'm going to jump back to our CLI flow. Now, you can see this is actually completed successfully, and it tells us where it saved that here. And it also auto-launched that in the browser for us, so you can either launch it by going there directly, or we can just go where it already opened that for us. And so we're greeted with this really useful dashboard. So you can see a summary up here. It says we have two projects, four issues, four incidents, and then there's this uh, story point estimator of how much work this will be. Um, I have kind of mixed feelings about this because story points don't mean much in isolation, but it's sort of a very high level estimate of how much work it might take, which I guess is nice. But now we have different options for drilling in and looking at these different issues. And you can see they're kind of ranked between mandatory as the most severe all the way down to just informational with this nice graph and some cool UI features here. So you can also read under the help uh, what these issues all mean. I imagine this will expand over time to include more information, but there's severity, 
uh, the story points, and so on. You can see at least does give kind of a base level estimate here. But let's go up to our projects. And so you can see here's our API project and our UI project. And so we can kind of drill down into these issues and incidents by project to see how we're doing. So if I go down into the API, you can see that there's a couple issues here. And we can look at that either through the component level. So it'll say right in our program.cs that there's a local network or IO operation detected. And then over here, it gives us more information about what that means. It essentially says that this type of IO operation might not run as expected or might not run the same once you actually deploy it out to Azure in that type of environment. And we can also look at this in our issues tab, same kind of thing. These are just different ways of breaking this down. But if we go back up to our projects and look at our UI, there's actually more issues here. So if we look at our components, here it's complaining about the CS proj and the program file. And if we expand these, you can see at the project level, it's detecting static content. So in this project, um, if you watch the previous tutorial, that actually copies static content into our publish to go along for the ride. And then it also distributes uh, static content in the form of CSS and JavaScript when the UI loads. So it's giving us advice about maybe using a CDN or blob storage. And then down here, it's also warning us about some hard-coded URLs and accessing external HTTP resources. Now, what's interesting about this is that if we go back to our app, and I'll shrink this just a little bit, we can see some of these issues that it's talking about. And what's really interesting is that most of these issues I actually brought up while we were building this app as things that we would wanna take care of later. And I hadn't even used the tool yet, but the tool ended up finding all those issues that I mentioned. So for example, if we look at our UI in our program.cs, you can see that this is hard coding a base address. So our, after we deployed our app, we sort of hard configured this UI to talk to an API using this URL. Well, our migration tool is saying you don't want to hard code URLs like this when you go to deploy to Azure because URLs can change out in the cloud and you want these to be dynamically discoverable and so on. And that's true of our API as well too. So here we're adding some clients where we go out and uh, use the Azure SDK to talk to different resources. And it's just kind of warning us about these types of things of making sure that these are dynamic. It also warned us about this file.readAllText. That was the IO error that it was giving us. It's essentially telling us to make sure that this file we're reading in is located in a place that will also work in like an app service environment or wherever we deploy it out to the cloud because just this default reading from the root here like this might not work out in the cloud. So that's kind of the general workflow here is that we go out and we look at our different projects, we see what it's complaining about, and then we go back and look at those in our solution. So here's what we were just looking at here where it's complaining about this IO operation. And we just looked at those static URLs. It's interesting that it found these same issues that we were concerned about while we were building this, and it makes it easy to track those down again. So I encourage you to play around with this tool. If you're working with a more sophisticated application, it's obviously going to give you a lot more in-depth issue reporting, but even with a simple app, we can see the usefulness here. And I kind of like this dashboard view where it breaks everything down for us. Um, interestingly, you could also just use this as sort of a general health tool. Uh, a lot of the cloud native uh, concerns that it warns about are just good practices in general, even if you're gonna be deploying on-prem. So you don't necessarily have to be going to Azure to use this tool. You could also just use it or to make sure that your app is kind of using best practices and future ready. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit subscribe to support the channel and the like button if you enjoyed this content. And I'll see you next time right here at the Code Wolf.